Hi and welcome to the Mathematic channel. How would we solve x cubed minus x squared equals 100? So this is a cubic, so a cubic equation is of third degree and because it's a cubic equation it should have three solutions. And so if we have three solutions one of the things we can do is try and find one of them and perhaps do a long division or factorize to try and find a quadratic for which we have a general formula and then we'll be able to solve this equation. Now it's apparent that if you were to plug a few numbers in here you'll see pretty quickly that 5 cubed minus 5 squared is actually equal to 100. If you tried 1, 1 cubed minus 1 squared is 0, 2, 2 cubed minus 2 squared that's 8 minus 4, that's 4 and you can work your way up a little bit to realize that 5 is actually a viable solution for this cubic. So as we look at this cubic and rearrange it, we actually have x cubed minus x squared minus 100 equals 0. And to factorize uh, this cubic, we can assume that x minus 5 is actually a factor. Why is it a factor? Because 5 is a solution. So anytime you find a number which is a solution to an equation, you're authorized to factorize by x minus the solution. So once we realize that 5 is a factor to this equation, we can actually do x cubed minus x squared minus 100 divided by x minus 5, and we should get a quadratic without a remainder. So I'll go ahead and set this up and say x cubed minus x squared plus 0x's minus 100, and this is just to make my long division easier. So this divided by x minus 5. And if you haven't done long division before with polynomials, this is a really good piece of practice for you to do, or even you could learn the technique right now. That's absolutely fine. So the way that we go about this is very much the same way we go about long division. How many times does x fit into x cubed? Well, it fits x squared times. And then you do x squared times x, which is x cubed. And then you can say x squared times negative 5, which is negative 5x squared. And what you should do here is subtract this line from that line. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0. These go away. And then negative x squared minus minus 5x squared is going to be negative x squared plus 5x squared. So negative 1 plus 5 is 4x squared. And now just like you would do with long division, you can drop the 0x down. And you ask yourself the same question. How many times does x fit into 4x squared? Well, x times 4x is 4x squared. So we can say plus 4x. And so now we have 4x times x, which is 4x squared, and 4x times negative 5, which is negative 20. Uh, negative 20x's, actually. So we're going to do this. 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. And then 0x minus minus 20x is plus 20x's. And now we can drop the 100 down. And technically, since 5 is a factor, we should have no remainder. So we can uh, check with this last uh, subtraction here. How many times does x go into 20x? Well, it goes plus 20 times. And sure enough, 20x uh, goes away. So 20 times x will be good here. And 20 times negative 5 is negative 100, which leaves us a remainder of 0. So this means that we can rewrite our cubic as, and perhaps I'll do this on the right-hand side for you guys, uh, x minus 5 multiplied by x squared plus 4x plus 20. So noticing that we end up with x squared plus 4x plus 20 equals 0, which is a second-degree equation. So following the same logic, we should have two solutions to this. We can look for the discriminant delta, since this is not easily factorized, which comes as b squared minus 4ac. The b value is 4, so this is going to be 16 minus 4 times 1 times 20. 16 minus 80. So when we get 16 minus 80 here, we get negative 64. And negative 64 being a negative value, delta is negative, and we have no solutions in the real numbers. Uh, so this is in the real numbers. So if we have no solutions in the real numbers, we're going to look for complex number solutions. Changing our negative 64 value for delta into 64i squared, we can say that the square root of delta is equal to 8i. So using the value square root of delta equals 8i, we can use the quadratic formula and we can say that our solutions are going to be minus b 
plus or minus the square root of delta over 2a and in this case we're going to use minus b as 4 so negative 4 so our solutions are going to be x1 x2 but these are in complex numbers minus 4 plus or minus the square root of delta so 8i over 2 and so our two solutions are going to be minus 2 and then plus or minus 4i so wrapping things up for this beautiful cubic equation, we have three solutions, x1, x2, x3, out of which uh, we have the first solution, which is 5, and then two complex solutions. So the first one is negative 2 minus 4i, and the second complex solution is minus 2 plus 4i. And that's the end of our solution set. And so this is how you solve this equation. Three beautiful solutions. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Mathemagic channel to learn how to solve more polynomial equations like this one. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.